The thing I don't like about the whole notion of atonement is the idea that somebody is sitting in judgment of you. Somebody big and all-powerful is pointing at you and saying, here's where you fell short. I don't like that idea of some other force doing that. But all of my life, there have been people who are willing to speak for that invisible being. So you think I'm going to hell. So you think because my mother works, I'm going to hell. So you think because my mother works for racial justice, I'm going to hell. But you know, the thing is that those people who said that all the time, they were a lot more afraid of hell than I was. Because I would go home and my mother would say to me, they don't know. They haven't been dead. Where are they getting that? They don't speak for God. And I'm so glad that I had that childhood foundation in not being intimidated by people who used God and hell as a bully. I wish that every person had that. Because when I talk to people who grew up inside of that, who were my neighbors, in fact, what I find out is, you're afraid you're going to hell? You've been told that if you are bad, you're going to hell? What a horrible thing for you to have to believe about yourself. You're just a kid. Of course you made mistakes. Of course you were mean to your brother. You're not going to go to hell. So what I've realized as an adult is that all of that energy they put on me about going to hell was a lot their own fear because unlike me, they were taught to believe in this place where atonement meant wait till your father gets home. You're going to be punished. And I wasn't raised with that. I don't mean to say that there wasn't other strange stuff I was raised with. The idea that all of justice happens on earth, for instance, I don't see that. As I've lived, I see a lot of mean, bad people who live long, prosperous lives and then die. And sometimes I really want them to atone for what they did. I really want hell to exist. When my daughter was three, she said to me, we don't believe in that mean God, do we? And I said, no, honey, we don't. And she said, but sometimes we really want to, don't we? I said, yes, honey, we do. And so what I've come to believe as I strive to stand on the side of love so imperfectly every day, knowing that I fall short every day, is that all of that living, all of that stuff that we do on this planet to care for each other, to be kind to each other, to speak up for the people who don't have the power to speak up for themselves, to use our power on behalf of those who are oppressed. All of that, I think, is what it means to move towards atonement, which I think of primarily as at one moment, to live with ourselves, not to think about some mean God who's going to say what my neighbor said. God thinks you're bad. God hates you. The Universalist said no loving God would create people in order to punish them. No loving God would do that. They said if no parent would create children just to punish them, why on earth wouldn't you believe that your God was bigger than your parent? Now, I talk to you guys, and I've had my own hard life, and I know that sometimes our parents aren't very loving. My own father had a violent temper, and when he died, there was part of me that wanted him to atone for that. You know, it kind of made me sad, like he never in his whole life said, I'm sorry I was mean to you kids. Never. He never said a word of apology. He died, and he died well. So I wrote to my childhood minister, kind of like a kid would, and I said, but wait a minute, seriously, that's it? That's all he gets? And the minister wrote back, Gordon McKeeman, he's old now, he lives in a nursing home, he wrote me back and said, you need to think about forgiveness yourself. You need to heal. You need to stop carrying this. And so that's what I've been doing since his death. I've been working on healing. And I've also come to some of my own beliefs about what happens after you die. Certainly this is something I've thought about all my life as I've looked at dictators and brutal military people and watched them live long, prosperous lives. I've thought, isn't there some atonement somewhere in the universe? I've wanted there to be. And so what I've come to believe is that when we die, our personality is gone, our body obviously is gone, but that the energy that we put into the world, our consciousness lives on, and that in fact I think we continue to evolve after we die. I do believe that. I'll talk more about that later. But that's not about punishment. That's about growth and learning and evolution and the continuing evolution of consciousness. So for me, atonement or atonement is all about finding a way, finally, in my deathbed, not to look for a God who's going to judge me and tell me what I did wrong and why I 
don't deserve to go to heaven. No, I picture that I'll be on my deathbed asking myself those hard questions. And that's why I want to live a life of purpose where on my deathbed I say to myself, I wasn't perfect, but I gave it the best I could. What? Seriously. That's what the chair thinks too.